All right, good morning, Art Not Bears. Thank you for joining us for our fourth author visit. This is our first virtual visit. Please welcome author Christine Evans. Um, she will be reading two of her latest books. One is called Emily's Idea, and the other is Evelyn, the Adventurous Entomologist. So with that, I'm gonna let our panelist teachers, Mr. Weber and Ms. Camberg, say hello. Good morning, hello, excited to be here. Good morning, Argonauts, good to see everybody. And then um, students, you are welcome. You are in listen mode only, but under the Q&A, you can see that you can um, chat, but we're gonna ask you to hold off on your questions um, so that you're really listening to our author, Christine Evans. Then after each book, we'll look for some of your questions and Ms. Canberg and Mr. Weber and I will look for those and we'll take turns reading some of your questions and getting them answered. Okay, so let's get this going. And I'm handing it off to author Christine Evans. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. So lovely to see you all virtually. Um, it's exciting for me. This is my first ever Zoom author visit. I hopefully it'll be the first of many because this is a great way to connect with everybody at home. Um, I am the author of currently two picture books. Uh, the first one, Evelyn, the Adventurous Entomologist, came out just last year in September. And then Emily's Idea is my newest book, brand new, came out on March 10th. So a very new book. And I'm going to read that one first because that's my newest book. And then we'll um, you know, ask me some questions about it. A little bit about me. So I mentioned I'm not far away from most of you. I live in Saratoga too. Um, I've lived here for eight years. As you can probably hear, I'm not from the US originally. I'm from England. See the map over there? That's, that's roughly where I'm from, that, that head-shaped part of the country. Um, a place called Suffolk is where I'm from originally. I have two daughters, a second grader and a kindergartner. Um, and so I started writing books for story, uh, books for children around oh, three or four years ago. I started writing seriously, um, wanting to get published. So this is the product of that. So I'll start. I'll start by reading this one, Emily's Idea, written by me, Christine Evans, and illustrated by Marta Alvarez Miguens. She lives in Spain, and we've never met. And so if you've got any questions about how that works, you can ask those in the chat. No, Emily's idea. I'll show you this cute dog. Look, how cute. Emily's idea started small. Many beautiful ideas do. She folded, doodled, and snipped. You see, there she is of her dog watching, making her paper dolls. But also, like many ideas, Emily's small idea grew until her room was alive with pattern and colour. Her dog's helping her. Gosh, I've only just noticed this cute picture up here. Cute little cactus of a smiley face. It's a beautiful thing about illustrations. You can spend time looking at them and spotting lots of different things. And I hadn't even ever spotted that before. <laughs> On share day, Emily's paper dolls inspired Miss Tate and Room 6B, so everyone folded, doodled, and snipped. Each doll was different, but the same. The whole class are making paper dolls. Her small idea had grown bigger than she was, bigger than she ever imagined. Her entire classroom full of paper dolls. It was a connection between Leah and Henry. Oh, I missed a page, missed a part, sorry. <laughs> it's hard to read it and show you guys at the same time. Between Luca and Evelyn, between Annabelle and Nico. Annabelle's my daughter's name, my other daughter's name, so I'm in trouble for missing her out. Between Leah and Henry. And still, Emily's idea grew. Do you see what her teacher's doing? 
So she's taken a picture and she's posted it online. And then other people are seeing and liking and hearting the idea. Chains hung in the bakery. In the hair salon, even in the post office. Her idea has started off spreading around her community. And then Emily's idea flew from coast to coast and floated across the ocean. So it's gone beyond her, her community now and it's starting to spread. Friends and strangers joined hands across bridges and town squares, beneath subways and bus shelters. Some people didn't understand. They ripped, belittled, destroyed. You see people are stomping on the paper doll chains, spoiling them. And the dog looks really sad. But Emily's idea kept growing. Dolls adorned houses, shops and schools, stations, trees and yards. Each doll was different, but the same. I'm trying to show you this page, isn't it pretty? Ooh, details. Emily stuck each story in her scrapbook, hands holding hands in Japan and Australia, Qatar and Iceland, South Africa and Mexico. Emily felt fluttery, just like a paper doll in the wind. I'll show you all different kids along the top. Everyone holding hands. On the last day of school, Emily hugged her bulging scrapbook. Miss Tate had a surprise, a parcel adorned with beautiful stamps. Let's find out what's inside. Emily ripped. Paper dolls cascaded into her lap. Each doll was different, but the same, just like us. She's opening it up and then the dolls say, thank you. I'll show you in the very back of the book. Here's some instructions and a template for making your own paper doll chains. My girls have made some, we've put them up in our, in our front window so people can see them out on the street. So any questions about that book? Thank you, Christine. I see one right here from Mahika. Can someone illustrate the book without your meeting in person? Mm -hmm. So I have um, an agent. And so my agent sent this book, this it's just, it was just written on a computer, like you guys might do your work on your Chromebook or your, on your computers. And I wrote it out in a Word document and sent it to my agent. And then she sent it out to publishers. And it's the publisher who decides who is going to illustrate the book. And then the publisher works with the illustrator and the art director um, works with the illustrator and they decide how they want the pictures to look. Um, I saw sketches, so I was able to say, oh, I think this should be like this or... I'm not sure about this, um, but yeah, most of, most of it was a surprise about how it was going to turn out. And we've never spoken, we've never even exchanged emails. <laughs> I have a slightly different relationship with the illustrator of my second book, um, Yaz, Yasmin, who illustrated this one. Um, she lives in Portland and she's very active on social media. Um, so I didn't talk to her directly while she was illustrating the book. Um, the publishers are very careful to make sure you don't. They don't want, you know, that's their, that's their job to illustrate the book. It's not my job to tell them what to do. Um, but since we, we chat on social media and we send emails to each other and we share things with each other. So we've gotten to know each other a bit. 
but I have no contact with Marta at all. But I love her work. She also illustrated um, Shark Lady by Jess Keating, which is one of my favourite books, a biography, a really, really nice book, picture book biography that I recommend. Any more about Emily's idea or about being an author in general? Something I really like about Emily's idea is that it's about, it's not just about making paper dolls, it's about a small idea that you have that you can make a difference with. So her idea was small, she just made, made some paper dolls because she liked them and then it turned out that other people liked them and other people wanted to make them. Um, the saying can be said, I don't know if any of you have made rainbows for your windows at home. That was an idea that started, I think Italy might have been the first country that started putting rainbows in their window to say, you know, we see you, we're all, we're all in this together. And now people, I've seen it in other neighbourhoods, people putting rainbows in their windows. And the same idea. I'm going to remind all the um, students who have entered a little bit after we started you're in a listen mode only, so welcome. And uh, Mr. Weber, Ms. Kamberg, and I are looking at the chat and we're looking at questions. And so we will look for the questions and ask them so you can type in the Q&A. And we'll, um, let's see, Ms. Kamberg, did you see one that you would like to share or Mr. Weber? I actually have a question myself. Sure. Um, I like the, I like the, the uh, another idea that you had going in the book of we are all the same but different mm -hmm. that was so when you were writing the book did you first start with the idea of a small idea growing and then you wrapped up with we are all the same and different or did you have those two ideas kind of working together and you wrote it beautifully to match it yeah it's funny i don't even quite remember so i i have got the um See if I can find it. It's on my phone. So I first wrote this idea down on a Christmas Eve night, um, which all sounds, in Wales of all places. We were there visiting family uh, two and a half years ago. And my oldest daughter, Emily, <laughs> hence Emily's idea, was um, couldn't sleep. She had an ear infection and she couldn't sleep. So she was in bed with me. And so I started just, I couldn't then sleep. So I started writing this down on my phone. I'm trying to find the original the way back um and so i don't know if i'm ready to, see, ready to see it this is the very first few lines that i wrote on my phone i can read it like many ideas emily started small she, she sketched and snipped and decorated also like many ideas her idea grew and grew until her idea spread and became more than just her idea it became a connection between her and him between them and them between friends between strangers and the idea wrapped around the world like a hug, hands holding hands. So that's where it started. So yeah, I started off with the idea of a small idea growing. And then the same but different came out of the fact that they were paper dolls. So you start with that same template and you make, they all look different. Great, thank you. Hi, Christine, it's Mr. Weber here. I, had, uh, I saw a question that I liked in there. Uh, boys and girls, I want to remind you in the chat box, if you could just write questions only, that would be really helpful for having us find questions and not putting all sorts of clutter in there. Um, someone asked, they said they're writing a book with their friends right now, and they're wondering if you had any tips for them. Oh, wow. So if you're writing with other people, um, so it's like a collaboration between other people, um, I think listen to each other's ideas, um, write down all of your ideas. Because sometimes even if you think, oh, that's not a very good idea, if you write it down, you might then come back to it later and put two ideas together in the same way as I did with, with this book. You know, I started off with that idea of something small and then ended up bringing in the same but different. So keep a record of all your ideas, because even if it doesn't work for your current project, it might work in the future. Um, I would say your first draft is very much your first draft. Um, a lot of writing is rewriting and editing. I'm sure your teachers tell you that too, that you don't just hand in your first version of your story, you then go back and you edit and you refine and you change things. So just like you saw that first draft on my phone, that's, that was my first draft of this story. And this particular one only took me two or three drafts before I submitted it. 
But Evelyn, the adventurous entomologist, was a very different story, and that took me about 40 different versions. And when I do an in-person visit, I have a scroll and I roll it out and it goes the entire length of the school hall of the cafeteria or whichever room you're in. So rewriting is essential. Um, what else is, um, one of my other top tips for writing is reading a lot. That's where I get ideas too, is from reading and just getting used to how other people write and how the language works and coming up with um, new ideas. Hope that's helpful. <laughs> Any more? Would you like me to read Evelyn? Let's get one more question. It looks like one of our teachers have asked, was writing a passion of yours when you were an elementary school student? Oh, that's a good question. I got asked this actually the other day. It was a, I was on a Facebook Live a few days ago and someone asked me that. And it just so happened my mum was on <laughs> from England and she was watching the Facebook Live too, which was lovely because she doesn't normally get to see my events. So that worked out lovely. And someone asked that question. So I asked my mum if she remembered and she said, yes, I'd always been creative. I'd always loved writing when I was um, in primary school, as it's called in England. Um, yeah, I'd always been writing. I'd always loved reading. I was one of those kids that would do the naughty thing of laying at the end of my bed to catch the light from the hallway so I could read even after the lights had been <laughs> gone off in my room. So yeah, I always loved reading and writing. Okay, should I, should I read Evelyn for you? And you can have some time to think about some more questions. Okay. So Evelyn, the adventurous entomologist, the true story of a world traveling bug hunter. Again, by me and illustrated by Yasmin Imamura. This was Yasmin's first book and she's just had another one come out a couple of weeks ago about monarch butterflies. She's got another one coming out soon, so she's amazing, I love her work. I'm gonna show you, this, this is the, this part of the book is called The End Papers, Capriteers. So I love, I, love, I love both these illustrators, they're very different styles, but they're both beautiful. I'm trying to get so I can show this better. Back in 1881, when Evelyn Cheeseman was born, most people thought girls should be quiet, clean, and covered with lace. And little Victorian girls definitely weren't supposed to go on bug hunts. But Evelyn went anyway. And I repeat this line a few times in the book, so you'll get to know that line. When I do it in person in schools, I get everyone to join in. So imagine you're all together and you're all going to stay together but Evelyn went anyway. She explored forests and splashed in ponds with her brothers and sister. She crawled in mud and stuffed her pockets with bugs. There she is. Jars of glowworms sparkled while she dreamed about the world beyond her small English home. Many years later, Evelyn applied to veterinary college. She longed to help sick animals. Let's show you both those pages. She's writing her letter to apply to veterinary college here. However, it was the early 1900s. Women couldn't vote. They rarely went to college and they certainly weren't allowed to be vets. So this is when, people, when women are asking for the vote. So Votes for women. So she did the next best thing and trained as a canine nurse, hoping the veterinary college would open to women after a few years. Evelyn cared for sick greyhounds, bulldogs and terriers. She fed the dogs, took their temperatures and gave them medicine. But in her heart, she still wanted to be a vet. I love this little terrier. I have a Yorkshire terrier. He looks a bit like this. One day, Evelyn's friend Grace wrote that her cousin, Professor Lefroy, was desperate for someone to run London Zoo's insect house. A woman had never been in charge of the insect house before. But Evelyn went anyway. I'm imagining you all saying that together. <laughs> A single beetle paddled in a giant tank, but the rest of the insect house echoed. 
They had been neglected while zookeepers, along with millions of other men, served in the First World War. Evelyn agreed to give the job a try. The inset house is com almost completely empty. There's just that one tank. She scooped insects from London's ponds and streams. She asked local children to find caterpillars, beetles and snails to star in her exhibits. She studied entomology, exploring insect books for wonders to share. I usually ask this question when I'm, in the, when I'm at a school. Entomology. Entomologists study bugs. So it's the science of studying insects. After a few weeks of bug hunting, the tanks were full, and so was Evelyn's heart. In the inset house, Evelyn spun stories for curious visitors. She showed them tiny ants carrying pine needles to build their homes. A water snail crawling up glass with its muscular foot and butterflies sipping nectar. Crowds swarmed to the insect house to watch Evelyn's bugs creep and slide and scurry. And there's Evelyn. Evelyn still dreamed about places beyond her small world, but now she also dreamed about insects never studied and about stories untold. Even when the veterinary college opened its doors to women at last, Evelyn knew she never wanted to leave the world of insects. In 1924, she heard about an expedition to study tropical insects. In those days, women scientists and explorers were rare. People thought it wasn't safe. Women should be at home, but guess what? But Evelyn went anyway. <laughs> After travelling on a rolling ocean for over 5,000 miles, Evelyn explored the Pacific Islands from sunrise to sunset. This is my favourite page. She chased centipedes, caught butterflies and stalked giant land snails. It's so pretty. Yasmin does, does a wonderful job drawing trees and insects. Bigger warning, a content warning. There's a spider on this page. On the island of Gorgona, Evelyn stumbled into a sticky curtain of spiderwebs. As the spiders watched, she bit and pulled and kicked the threads. But there was no escape. I often get asked if that was, um, this is, remember this is a true story. So she, this really happened. This was a, a real situation. She got stuck in a real spider's web. Then Evelyn remembered the metal nail file in her pocket. She hacked each sticky strand one by one and emerged from her cocoon. Okay, the spiders are going now. On the island of Nukuhiva, Evelyn wanted to scale a steep cliff that she was sure would reveal some interesting insects. The villagers told Evelyn that only one man had ever climbed it. They told her not to go. You guessed it. But Evelyn went anyway. This goat is thinking, what is she doing? After hours of climbing, Evelyn was rewarded with buzzing bees and wasps, beetles and grasshoppers. However, she soon realised she'd made a terrible mistake. She'd forgotten the fresh lime she planned to squeeze and drink. As Evelyn hunted for a stream, she slipped. She grasped at plants as she kept tumbling. until she clung to a bush and stopped. All alone, Evelyn had to save herself. She inched slowly up the cliff like a caterpillar. Evelyn had survived another adventure and her backpack full of insects had survived too. Evelyn kept traveling and studying insects. In 1925, she sailed to Tahiti, where she discovered a new species of grasshopper. It's hard to see, but she's got a grasshopper on her hand. In 1934, she explored New Guinea and found a new species of beetle. In 1938, she found a new blue orchid on top of an extinct volcano in Wego. So she found other things, not just insects. She, she found... Um, frogs and lizards as well. She was the first person to, to find them. 
1955, the Queen of England awarded Evelyn an OBE, the Officer of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, for her services to science. Evelyn never stopped working, even after her hair turned white and her body ached. For nearly 30 years, this adventurous entomologist climbed mountains, explored jungles, and collected insects. Then she spun her stories into books, inspiring others to be like Evelyn. And go anyway. Okay, I'll just show you, the, show you some of the back pages. There's an interview here, a Q&A with a, um, an entomologist who works now in the field. She studies bees. Um, obviously bees are really important because they pollinate flowers, so she studies them. So it talks about how she became an entomologist, if she's discovered anything new. She ever got into her own sticky situations like Evelyn did. And then there's a picture of the real of Evelyn as she looked. And there we go. Any questions about Evelyn? We have some water. <laughs> that was a beautiful story about Evelyn. It looks like many questions are um, about you know, how did you learn about Evelyn? Is she somebody that young children in England would grow up knowing? Yeah, I, um, I knew I wanted to write a biography um, about a woman. Um, so I was looking around for, people, for a woman that people hadn't heard of or hadn't written about. I don't remember how I found, I think I Googled it, like women scientists. Um, and a, a page came up on the London Zoo website about Evelyn and I found another page on the Natural History Museum in London, it's their website. And so I obviously looked into it some more, looked at any other books about her and no one else had written a picture book about her. In fact, no one else has really written about her apart from her own book. So she wrote her own um, autobiography over two, two books. She wrote books for children, but no one had written about her. So I decided she deserved her own picture book. Any more? I see uh, one question someone asked, and I was wondering the same thing. Did she have a favorite type of insect at all? That you know I, I don't believe she did. I think she was just fascinated by all insects. Um, she definitely, um, the places she was going, I guess, she didn't see so many. I mean, definitely beetles. I know she collected a lot, lot of beetles. I guess maybe they're, I don't know, they're some of the most, most commonly occurring insects, but. I see what my favorite is. My favorite is butterfly. <laughs> uh, I saw another really good question. Someone asked, even though, uh, so the illustrator, you send it out and the publisher decides how it's laid out as far as the illustrations. Do you get to decide which words are on which page as far as how it's broken up or the publisher mm. the illustrator decides? That's a good question. Um, so sometimes when you submit a manuscript, um, sometimes you do put in the pages. You say page, so our picture books are 32 pages long normally. Um, and they start with this, all this information in the front. So they have this page of the dedication. This one's to Ben and my two little, two little bugs, Emily and Annabelle. Um, so you have a dedication and the copyright page. You have a title page. So all those pages you don't get to put anything on. And then sometimes, to so say this is page three and four, sometimes you can say, this is page three and four, and this is the text on that page. But even if you do submit it like that, there's nothing to say that the editor or the art director won't lay it out differently. So no, that's, that's out of my control. But I do, you see proofs as it goes. So I, I saw a PDF version, I saw it all laid out. So I could have said then, oh, I think that should be on a different page, but I trust the experts at these things and um, I assume they know what they're doing. <laughs> Miss Christine, what are your plans for, um, for your next steps? Do you have any ideas? Do you have something going out to the publisher now? Yeah, I've always got lots of new ideas. And I'm one of those people that tends to get excited about new ideas and start writing new things. And I haven't finished writing the previous thing. Um, <laughs> but confirmed, I have a a chapter book series coming out next year called The Wish Library. Um, that's coming out with um, Albert Whitman, the name of the publisher, next spring. 
So I've just finished book one. Um, and I wrote book one a while ago, but then it has to go, you have to go back and forth. So even though I'd written it as well as I thought, and I'd done multiple drafts, then the editor looks at it and says, oh, I think it needs to be like this or like this. And it's not just word changes. Sometimes it's quite structural. Like this event should happen here and not here. Um, so I went back and forth with the editor a few times on revisions of him and it's just been to the copy editor. Um, the copy editor is the person that makes sure you've got your commas in the right place and the capital letters where they're supposed to be and the colons. And so it's just come back from her and I've just sent it back to my editor. I've just sent him the dedication for it, which is that bit at the beginning, who, it's, who I've written it for. Um, and then I'm now writing the draft for book two. And for that, I started with an outline, which I don't normally do, but you should all do <laughs> because it makes writing it much easier. Um, so I wrote an outline and my editor agreed that. And then I've, now I'm writing the draft for book two. And that should be out next year too. But it's been a very different writing a chapter book compared to writing picture books because they're normally short. And my chapter book is going to be about 8,500 words. Whereas picture books tend to come in around 500. Although my two are not, neither of those are 500. Evelyn's more and Emily's idea is a lot less. So. But I'm always writing new ideas. So there's always something going to my agent or going to an editor. <laughs> I'm going to repeat, Christine, you had said earlier that um, it took maybe about three drafts for the Emily's idea, um, but this, the Evelyn, the adventurous entomologist, took you upwards of 40 drafts. And this idea of revision that we teach our kids that you're not finished after one draft. Tell us a little bit more about the 40 drafts. <laughs> yeah, it took me a while to decide um, the angle, really, because when you're writing a biography, you've got their entire life that you could write about. And with Evelyn, I did pretty much go from childhood to the end of her life, but you had to, I had to then choose which events I talked about within that. So it took a lot to decide what needs to be in the story, what's important, what do I want people to know about Evelyn? Um, and also that refrain, but Evelyn went anyway, that didn't even come in until I think the second to last version that I sent in to my editor. So I'd already sold it at that point. And yet we were still making big changes um, along the way. So yeah, I did it in different points of view. So I even tried writing it in the first person, pretending, you know, that it was Evelyn writing her own story. I wrote it, um, and obviously I, mean, I ended up in third person. Um, but yeah, and I think I did some present, wrote it in present tense. So feeling like you were with her at the same time as things were happening. But that didn't work, so it went back to past tense. So I, all these different versions were all kind of slightly different. So yeah, it was a, I have, um, I have critique partners. That's an important part of my process. I have um, two good friends that I trust. And I always send my writing to, and we read each other's work and say, oh, I think you could change this, or this isn't quite working, or this is great. So that's a big part of the process too, is having other people read your work. I see a question from, um, I'm gonna say the mother-daughter team of Alice and Julia Vaughn. What were your favorite books when you were growing up? Ah, I love this question, everything. Um, well, I'm English, so I read a lot of Roald Dahl. Um, I loved Matilda. Um, and then I read, uh, there's another English author called Enid Blyton. She wrote a whole series called The Famous Five and The Secret Seven. And there's, a, there's another series about boarding school. Um, and then The Worst Witch, which has been made into a Netflix show quite recently. So you might have seen that one. The Worst Witch is another chapter book series from my, my childhood. Um, yeah, I've read... So I, I think I really loved finding an author that I liked and then reading everything. So Ina Blyton read all of hers. And as I was slightly older, things like Little Women was always one of my favorites. So I loved the recent movie version of that. <laughs> <laughs> and we're nearing the end. Are you okay with a little bit, a few more questions? Of course. Um, we see, I. I wanted to mention Michaela Shen earlier was asking about chapter books and that's exciting that you have started a chapter book series. Um, on her behalf, 
I'd like to welcome you and, and if you want a, an experimental audience, we'd love to hear you come to our school <laughs> once you are ready to publish your um, first book and the chapter book. And also I look, I see another question of how many books have you written so far? Well, yeah, I've published those two, but the amount of, I don't even know how many manuscripts I've written that are sitting on my Google Drive. Um, it's even impossible. I, I'm in a group called um, 12 by 12, which is about writing 12 picture book manuscripts a year. So 12 manuscripts in 12 months. And I've been in that group for four years. So <laughs> there's, there's a lot of picture book manuscripts sitting on my, on my Google Drive that have, may never get published, but they may help. They may come in something else in the future. So I keep everything. Like I said, I keep all my ideas because someday I might be able to combine them with something else. Um, and it's all good practice too. The more I've written over the years, the better I've got. You just have to keep, keep practicing. Some, some, a, a couple questions are um, from some, some families here at Argonaut. Can we see your, your newest draft? But I'm wondering, is it, are you, do you do it on a typing Google document or are you handwriting it with a pen and paper? Yeah, I've always, I've always um, gone straight to computer. It's just how I find it more efficient for me because, you know, I have two children and if I don't have time, I'm often out and about with my, and I have my phone with me. That's why that first draft Emily's idea, because I was in, I was away on vacation, family in Wales, and I have my phone. So that's where I wrote it. And so I do tend to do all my writing straight onto computer. I've just started trying to write more poetry. And for some reason I find poetry, I find easier to write by hand. Something about that connection, I think. So just tab, but yeah, I've, my book is away in my bedroom. I don't have it out here, but um, yeah, all of it is on the computer. I haven't even got a printout handy. Sometimes I have it printed out. So when I'm editing, I tend to print it and then read it that way. Another thing I do when I'm editing that's find useful is to get it read to me. And if I haven't got someone in the house to read it to me, I get um, Microsoft Word or Siri or whatever device to read it to me. And you tend to hear things. You think, oh, that doesn't sound right when someone else reads it. So that's a tip for editing is to get someone else to read your work aloud because you hear, you hear it differently to when you just read it on your screen. But I'd love to share it once I have, um, yeah, it will come out. So I guess if it comes out spring, then publishers normally release something called an ARC, advanced reader copy, um, or an F and G, which is, means folded and gathered, which is just a, it's the printout, but just folded together, not bound how a book would be. So if I get any of those in advance of the release, maybe I'll be able to come and see you guys <laughs> and read it to you. Otherwise I won't be able to read it until after it comes out in spring. I'll come, I'd love to come see you guys then too. That would be lovely. Um, I think I'll end maybe if each of the teacher panelists can find one more question or comment, it could even be a comment. I see Ethan has asked, what are your favorite things to do aside from writing? Oh, well, I love running so and hiking. So I'm often out running or hiking. Um, 20, I'm normally sitting the way around and my medals are on the wall from running. You know, I love doing the local races and half marathons and one marathon. I ran one marathon once, <laughs> probably never again. Um, what else do I like to do? That's my main and baking, cooking. So I'm pretty happy at home doing my baking and cooking at the moment and I'm hanging out with my kids. And I, I do love drawing. I just haven't quite got to the point where I illustrate my own books. I think that's a way, way, way off in the future, but you never know, maybe one day. This is a question from Sophie. Um, do your daughters look at your writing before you publish, I think is what it says. Oh, yes, I often read it aloud to them. They are often my audience. Um, yeah, for both of these books, they heard multiple versions before. Oh, I can hear them coming. <laughs> multiple versions before they got submitted. Um, and then obviously once, and they hear them a lot once they've been published too, because they come to my readings and events. So yeah, they're my first audience normally. Any more? Mr. Weber, do you have any other 
comments or questions? Oh, um, some of the kids were asking about your favorite books. Are there picture books that are also your favorite ones? Um, so some recent picture books that I really love. Um, so I mentioned Shark Lady by Jess Keating. That's a biography about a marine biologist. Really love that one. Um, a more recent, even more recent one, Amy Dykeman. I like all her books. Dandy um, is a really is a favorite of mine. It's about a little girl and her daddy. And she has a dandelion that she's looking after in the garden and daddy wants to mow the, mow the lawn. <laughs> and so it's about her protecting her friend Charlotte, the dandelion. And it's so cute. One of my current favourites. Um, oh, my good friend. So I mentioned my critique partners. Um, my friend, she has a picture book coming out um, in June called Invent a Pet. Um, it's got a stem, a good stem focus. It's about the idea of inputs and outputs. Um, and she gets a machine where she can invent her own pet. And it's about this girl figuring, figuring out how, what she needs to put into the machine and what comes out at the other end. So yeah, it introduces the concepts of input and output. And then she's got a chapter book series coming out too in May called Layla and the Bots. And that's coming out with Scholastic. And it's really fun. It's a really fun chapter book series. Um, highly recommend. And she's local, she's in Mountain View, so maybe she'd come visit you one day too. <laughs> Thank I, you. So I really like your style, Christine. You seem to be very, you know how children think. If you come to Argonaut at the at our recess time, you'll see kids, our students are frolicking in the green grass, saving dandelions from, <laughs> from the next predator. And um, yeah, it's it's a really nice real mm. uh, real ideas that you work with yeah this is amy dykeman who wrote dandy that's her um oh, okay okay yeah that's her book but she yeah she's great at that stuff she really gets how kids so look up amy dykeman's books in general because all of hers are great for kids but yeah i wish that was my idea because it's lovely <laughs> but even the the study of women of girls um the entomologist is is right where our kids are mm. yeah well I, I mean most a lot of kids love bugs and mm -hmm. it's inspiring to see stories about about people going out and following their passions thanks agreed thank you so much this was really a special opportunity for us well we are in school closure and sheltered in place and you just took us to two different worlds with <laughs> Emily's idea and with Evelyn, the adventurous entomologist, um, certainly inspired me um, as a big girl and <laughs> inspired all of our children. Um, we'll make sure that we share out this recording. And if you want to hold up both books, I wanted to just let all the kids and families watching um, Hickleby's Bookstore because we're not at school, you can go online and order these books. And we're still working with Christine and seeing if she can autograph and personalize them before they get shipped out. So we'll work with Hickleby's and um, our author, Christine. It's really, really special. Thank you so much. You're and welcome. we know working moms, working parents are all struggling. <laughs> you use the word connection multiple times in your answers and that was that's been really our focus in going online with these um, Zoom meetings and webinars and Google Meets that uh, we wanted to bring some normalcy to our kids and continue with our author series. So thank you so much. Oh, it's been my pleasure. You've been a great audience. Thank you.